All right, so we've wrapped up rotation. I think you're ready to do this homework. Uh, this lecture today is Monday the 13th, so this will be due on Friday, April uh, the 17th, I believe. Let's go to our homework assignments. Friday 4-17. So, so we've had a little break for the homework, so get back to doing the homework. You've got homework 15 due um, Wednesday and homework 16 due Friday. Okay, so now uh, hang with me. We, we probably have time, honestly, to do 17, but um, I honestly don't have the notes in my... Uh, they're back in the office. Um, the past few semesters, I have skipped uh, 17. Um, so I haven't assigned homework. It's not on your final exam. Uh, so bear with me. Still keep listening. Uh, but I want to I wanna jump through 17. And maybe if I get around to it, I'll make a video of these problems with 17. Because they're, they're pretty interesting. Uh, but basically, it is some translation and rotation. It's translation and rotation. It's really not that bad. We're still summing the forces in X equals MAX. Summing the forces in Y equals MAY. Summing the moments equals IG alpha. Um, let's look at a few of these problems right here. And I don't have these. I'm not going to work these out. But I want to just mention them. Just talk about them. Um, so that you could handle something that wasn't in pure translation or something that wasn't in pure rotation. You see, there's no new notes. I'm just going to some new problems because there, there's nothing new. We're still summing the forces in one direction, summing the forces in another direction, summing the moments about point G. So with this one, you know, I would draw a free body diagram, um, and I would sum my forces in X equals MAGX. So this is where we got to be really careful because... The, this whole thing, G might be accelerating different from P, might be accelerating different from A. Um, we're talking about the acceler... We're, we're going to define the acceleration of point G right here. So this is the acceleration of G subscript in the X direction. Um, and I would sum... And actually, I think in this case, there are, there's nothing. There's zero. So that would show me that the acceleration in X is zero. Uh, I would sum the forces in Y. You know, negative 20, positive 80. Uh, you know, anything in the Y direction equals M, A, G in the Y direction. So that would give me the... What's the acceleration of the center of gravity G at this instant? And then I would sum the moments, probably about G, equals I, G alpha and so I could I could you know define the acceleration of G in the X the acceleration of G in the Y and the alpha of the bar all right so it's you know summing the free body diagram and summing the forces and summing the moments here this one um, I want to talk about friction for a second. The sphere rolls down the inclined plane without slipping. To determine the angular acceleration of the sphere and the acceleration of its mass center. Uh, so what would my free body diagram look like? Um, I would have the weight right here. The normal force, see, I don't have to worry about, hey, where should I place the normal force? There's only really one point that's really contacting right there. And here, we've talked about friction. Um, in this case, friction... Friction uh, is needed to cause the rotation, rotation, not the acceleration. And so what would happen is, is if I came down here, I'd probably want, how should I define my axes? Um, probably X and Y. I define my axes along the same lines as the acceleration of point G. So here's point G. What? How is G accelerating? It's accelerating down here. <clears throat> so I would define my axes according to the um, incline. Anyway, summing the forces in X equals M A G X, A G subscript X, uh, and summing the forces Y equals M A G subscript Y. But anyway, when I came down here to summing the moments about G. I would say, oh, well, N goes straight through G. 
W goes straight through G. So the only thing creating a moment is the force of friction. And I, I, I can tell that this is going to be accelerating down, rotating down this incline. So if I know that my moment should be this way, that would, if I hadn't already put this force of friction in the right direction, it would have told me, oh, okay, well, the friction is the only thing that causes a moment, and I know the moment should be counterclockwise because it's rolling down here. That's why friction is right here. Remember we talked about sometimes friction causes the rotation, sometimes fr friction causes the motion. Um, I, I think all this motion could definitely be caused by the weight, this component of the weight right here. So this component of the weight causes the acceleration in X. Uh, what is the acceleration in Y? Nothing. And actually, what is the acceleration in X? What is the acceleration in X um, for a wheel that is rolling without slipping? The acceleration of the center is R alpha, and it is straight down the incline. It is straight down the incline right there. Uh, so anyway, this is a, an interesting problem where you got to get that force of friction in the right direction. Got to know that the acceleration of the center of the wheel is... Um, R alpha, um, and but, but anyway, summing the force in X equals M A X, summing the force in Y equals M A Y, summing the moments about G would be I G alpha. So I could f define everything, angular acceleration of the sphere, A G X and A G Y, though A G Y is zero at this instant. So look, look at that problem. Let's look at this next one though. This one is not a wheel that is rolling without slipping. It is slipping <coughs> as it's rolling. It is spinning its its tires. You know, it's it's spinning its tires too fast. So it doesn't roll without slipping. It rolls as it slips. Um, and so this one, we know the force friction is mu k times n. This one is twisting to the right twisting to the right um, and the force of friction would be right here mu k times n force of friction would be opposing this relative you know this wheel is not going backwards but relative to the ground it wants to go backwards it's slipping backwards actually sorry this wheel is going backwards down here sorry um, because it is slipping as it's rolling uh, force of friction and so in this case, the force of friction is what causes the motion forward. Um, a good free body diagram would be, I've got this moment, this 100 Newton meter moment. I've got the weight. I've got the normal force. And I've got the force of friction. And I would sum the forces in X equals MAGX. Sum of the forces in Y equals MAY. I think that'd be zero at this instant. We can assume it's going that way. And summing the moments about G equals I G alpha. Now in this case, this acceleration of G is not R alpha. Why? Because it is slipping as it's rolling. This is only true for wheels that are um, rolling without slipping. Wheels that have good contact with the ground. Wheels that have a velocity of zero down here. But I would have enough information now that I know force or friction. Um, I would have three equations with three unknowns. My unknowns probably in acceleration in the x and alpha. In acceleration of g in the x and alpha. And these two are not related because it is slipping as it's rolling. All right, then one more problem, which I used to teach a lot better than this semester. I apologize. Um, but this is like the angular equivalent of those will-it-slip type of problems. Okay, uh, we've got a 50-pound wheel. Uh, we're given the rate of generation, so with that we could find I pretty quickly and easily. Um, it's given a moment of 35 pound-feet. 
um, and we want to find the acceleration, and they give us the static coefficient and kinetic coefficient. Because think about this. If, if this is a really, really hard moment, if you twisted this really hard, then it, it might slip right here. But if you just give it a nice, a nice soft twist, what's going to happen? It will roll without slipping. So this is the angular equivalent of those will it slip type problems. And so I, I, I do it the same way um, I used to. First, I would assume no slipping. First, I would assume no slipping. So what would that mean? That would mean that I don't know the force of friction, but that would mean the acceleration of point G is equal to I or is equal to R alpha. Okay, and then then what would I do? I, I would solve for force of friction. See if this is possible. If this is possible. Uh, if it is possible, then I'm done. That is my answer. You know, I made an assumption it wasn't slipping, and <coughs> or and even though it's not slipping, it is rolling. You know, it is rolling without slipping. Uh, but if this is impossible, if force of friction is greater than the max, what's the max? Mu S N. Uh, then I would rework. Then I would rework. Now, knowing that the force of friction is mu K N, but A G, I don't know anymore. It is not R alpha. But but I'm still free body diagram, summing the forces in X equals M A X, summing the forces in Y equals M A Y. A Y probably zero if we're, if we're just traveling along the horizontal path, uh, and then summing the moments about G equals I G alpha. So this is, you know, um, similar to what we had done previously in the semester, but a little bit more fun maybe. Um, but still, free body diagram, summing the forces uh, for for these problems, and drawing a good free body diagram this whole semester is I think most important. So anyway, we're I apologize. We're gonna not y'all don't get the fun of uh homework seventeen. Um but I think y'all will be okay with that.